Philip stares at the plane before him. He would finally be able to see what lies inside this mysterious plane. He hesitates, but then steps inside. His colleagues follow him behind. They can't believe what they are seeing. How could something so big go unnoticed for so long? But they were soon about to find out the reason. Philip couldn't feel his hands anymore from the cold, but it was all worth it. No one had ever disclosed anything like this before. Well, there was one person, but they stayed anonymous, and Philip would soon find out why. This was too big for Philip to research on his own, so he called two of his colleagues, and they flew over to Alaska immediately. No one had ever seen anything like this before, and together they decided to try and get inside the plane. But no one was prepared for what they were about to see. Philip was the first person who stepped inside the plane. His mouth fell open instantly. How is it possible that no one knew about this? Philip and his colleagues look at each other in disbelief. This will make them famous. But what do they find inside the plane that is so important? Philip is a researcher who moved to a little town in Alaska just because he had heard a story about it. Some might say his reasoning was a little weird, but he didn't care. He had gotten an anonymous letter and Philip had to know whether it was true. He had left behind all his friends and family for this project and traveled to an unknown country. Someone from the town had sent him a letter for a reason. He was a chosen one, as he would describe it, and he was determined to turn over every stone for this project. It had been a long time since Philip felt this motivated for a project. There was a lot about this project that interested him. He wondered why this person had chosen him in particular and how he or she got his address. But Philip could have never expected his trip to end like this. He arrived at the town a few days after he had received the letter. It was a very old and empty town. There was only one supermarket and the streets looked deserted. Philip started his research by knocking on doors and asking people about the legend. But the people did not receive him with open arms. He had knocked on almost every door when he saw an old man walking the streets. Philip ran towards the man and asked if he could tell him something about the urban legend. The man hesitated, but then said to Philip, Come to the old horse in an hour. Philip agreed without knowing what the old horse was. It turned out that the old horse was a little cafe in the center of the town. When Philip entered the cafe, he saw that the man had already arrived. Philip sat across from the man and put his notebook on the table. The man stayed silent for a while, but then he started talking. The legend goes on as follows. There was once a plane with the number 66 that was supposed to fly to Japan. No one knew who was on the plane or what it was carrying, and as soon as the plane took off, it went off the radar. Some say there was a horrible storm, but scientists debunked that theory. To this day, no one knows what happened to that plane. Philip looks at the man in disbelief. The man in turn looked at him stoically. He wanted to ask more questions, but the man got up and walked out of the cafe. There was only one thing left to do, and Philip wasn't entirely happy about it. The only thing that Philip could do now went on his own search. But first, he had to figure out what route the plane could have flown and followed that route. Does he figure this out? Then suddenly, he gets an idea. The local airport employees needed to know something about the plane's disappearance. So, he started at an Alaskan airport. But he soon realized that there had been a different airport because no one knew about the plane 66. So Philip had to start thinking outside the box. When Philip came home from the airport, he saw a little note attached to his door. He wondered who it could be from, but there was no name or stamp on the note. So it had to be delivered personally. He removes the letter from the door and sits down at the kitchen table. Philip opened the note and immediately recognized the handwriting. It was from the same person as the anonymous letter was from. But this time, there was only one sentence. Philip reread the sentence three times so that he could fully absorb it. Go to the right side of the town and walk along the mountain path. Find Theo. Philip wondered who this person was who kept sending him notes and letters. And who was this Theo? But he knew what he had to do now. Philip packed his backpack and started his journey through the deserted town. The village looks like a ghost town. No light shines in the houses and no one else on the streets. When he reached the mountain path, he noticed something strange. There was a sign that said, Restricted area, no trespassing. But this didn't scare Philip. He started walking. It was a little difficult path because there were a lot of loose stones and frozen puddles. But he managed to make it to the first destination. He saw a little cottage in the distance. That must be Theo, he thought. And he started to walk a little faster. 
A storm was heading towards him, so he had to reach the cottage just in time. But then something happens that he didn't expect. But to his surprise, no one was home. He banged on the door as the wind started to pick up. He had to figure out a way to get inside, or he would never be able to continue his search tomorrow. Then something unexpected happens. Then the door flipped open, and Philip stood face to face with the silhouette of a little man. Theo, he asked, and the man stepped aside. He didn't say a word to Philip, which was strange. It felt like he was expecting him. Who is this man? The man pointed to a bed, but there was something else. On top of the bed was another note. Because of all these notes, Philip felt like he was on a scavenger hunt. If this person knew where the plane was, why didn't they go to it themselves? The note contained coordinates. Philip is fortunately good at reading coordinates, so he knows roughly which way to go. Philip knew the plane had to be where the coordinates led him. So the following day, he continued his search optimistically, but he would have never seen this coming. Philip walked and walked until his legs started to get sore. He was almost at the top of the mountain, and there was still no sign of the plane anywhere. Could this person be playing with him? But then he sees something he can't explain. Philip looks to his left and sees something sticking out of another mountain. It doesn't look like something out of nature. He squints his eyes and suddenly recognizes a wing. That must be the plane, Philip thinks. But the plane is at least another day's walk from where he's standing, and there is something else. There is no path leading towards the plane. Philip has to go off-road to reach it, and there is a deep layer of snow. He can't see what's underneath the snow, so he has to be very careful. He shuffles his feet over the ground to feel the rocks and make his way over the plain. But it was getting darker by the minute. Philip was only half there when the sun started to set. He had a little flat spot of ground inside where he could set up his tent, but he had to reach it very quickly. He made it just in time and set up his tent, but the wind started to pick up. Philip got in his sleeping bag and tried to stay warm, but it wasn't so easy. He woke up the next morning with the frozen hands and ice picks in his beard. Luckily for him, the sun was shining so he stood outside for a little bit to warm up. When he was a little bit warmer, he put everything away and continued his journey. He was very close now. When Philip finally reached the plane, he couldn't believe his eyes. It was almost entirely buried under the snow except for the one wing he saw. This was way too big for Philip to do on his own. So he mapped where the plane was and journeyed back to Theo's cabin. There he would call for backup. Philip called two of his best friends who were also researchers, Lincoln and Greg. They had no idea that Philip was all the way in Alaska, but didn't doubt him when he asked them to come too. They knew there had to be something extraordinary for Philip to fly over there, but they never expected to be this. Lincoln and Greg arrived three days later and they all set up their things in Theo's cabin. It was the closest place to the plane with internet and power for their equipment. Philip led the way towards the plane, and his friends followed him blindly. They were stunned when they saw what Philip was doing there. They spent the first few days digging the plane out of the snow. Somehow the plane was still mainly intact after the crash. The only thing that were broken off were one side wing and the back tail of the plane. But there were no holes in the side. They had to figure out another way to get inside the plane. Philip tried to look inside the plane through the windows, but there was something in front of them. They were taped shut with black tape. There must be something or someone very important inside for them to tape everything shut. And he wasn't far off. Lincoln suggested that they drill a hole in one of the plane's doors. That way they could get inside. But Phil was more interested in something else he saw sticking out of the tail of the plane. It was a little orange device and he soon realized what he had found. It found the plane's black box. This was something very serious because this box held the reason why the plane crashed so many years ago. Philip took the box back to the cabin and screwed it open, only to find something very strange. There should be a big memory card of some sort inside the box, but there was nothing. The slot where the card should have been was empty, and Philip didn't understand why. Did someone take it out or was it never there in the first place? This case was getting more mysterious by the minute. Philip suddenly remembers the anonymous letters he had received. What if this person had taken out the memory card? And they only needed Philip to open up the plane so that they could swoop in all and steal everything that hid inside. He shakes his head and tells himself to get it together, but the thought stayed in the back of his mind. Philip had never told Lincoln and Greg about the anonymous letters, and he didn't intend to do so until one of them asked about it. 
They wondered how Philip knew about this plane and why no one from the authority was helping him. But when he explained what had happened, Lincoln and Greg reacted differently than he expected. They got scared when they discovered what was happening and suddenly didn't want to continue their work. So, Philip reminded them about the thrill and adventure they were having. What was the worst thing that could happen? Philip asked them, but he didn't know then what he knows now. Philip convinced them to continue the research, so they started drilling the next day. It was a big job than they anticipated, but they got through the plane's exterior after a while. But the hole wasn't big enough for any of them to crawl inside through. Eventually, the hole was big enough and Philip stepped inside the plane. He ripped the tape from the first few windows. The natural light beamed over the inside of the plane and he couldn't believe what he was seeing. The plane was filled with crates, but that wasn't the only thing he saw. Something in the corner of the plane glistened in the sun. Philip walked towards it and picked it up. It looked like a bullet, but it was all flattened by something. Philip's friend followed him inside and looked around at open mouths. They were too stunned to speak. Philip showed them the bullet and they decided to check the cockpit together. They opened the door, expecting to see something horrible, but they were met with something that they couldn't explain. The cockpit was empty. There were no bodies or other signs that there had been two people in there flying the plane. While Philip stayed in the cockpit to look around, Greg ran back to the cottage and grabbed a crowbar to open the crates. But when he opened the crates, he couldn't believe his eyes. He called for Philip and he rushed to Greg. Together they unloaded the crates, but Lincoln was nowhere to be found. Suddenly, they heard a helicopter flying over their heads. Not long after that, Lincoln ran inside and yelled that the police were coming. And it didn't look good. Philip could hear the sirens from afar and the roars of the snow scooters coming very close every minute. Philip tried to think of an explanation. The police arrived within a few minutes and they surrounded the plane. Philip, Lincoln and Greg walked out of the plane with their hands up in the air. But Philip was holding something. He was holding the anonymous letters in his hands and wanted the police to see them, but they didn't. They were taken to the police station and questioned one by one. Philip was the last one and could finally show the police officers the letters. They were confused as to why he had never called the police, but he explained that he was a researcher and wanted to discover it independently. He told the police that the crates were filled with bars of gold and black box was empty. He gave the police all the information he had and he let them and his friends go. The police asked Philip if he wanted to assist them in the case and he gladly accepted. Philip Lincoln and Greg helped the police with the case and got an honorary medal for finding the plane. But it wasn't finished yet. There was one more person that needed to be found, the anonymous tipper. The police promised Philip to find this person, but it turned out to be harder than they first thought. Philip and his friends flew back home, and now they wrote a book about their adventure. The book became a bestseller, and everyone wondered about this anonymous tipper. But it turned out that this person was never found, and no one will ever know why they did what they did.